The other major flaw in our monetary system is a massive subsidy which many don't even recognize as one. The fact that the government guarantees bank deposits practically for free. The main business of the banking and investment sector is the management and pricing of risks. It shouldn't be difficult to see how severely a free insurance distorts such a sector. Leverage means how much credit finance a company uses compared to shareholder equity. According to the capital structure irrelevance principle, leverage should not affect a company's market value. But with banks, liquid deposit accounts form a major portion of their credit liabilities and as these are publicly insured, a bank's costs of credit don't rise with leverage as they would for other companies. Therefore, banks can impose parts of their risks on taxpayers by leveraging themselves further, in other words holding smaller amounts of equity, that is, being less solvent. And this of course encourages them to keep themselves as insolvent as possible. Additionally, our current growth-dependent real economy is so fragile that politicians fear that it could not survive the bankruptcy of a large bank without falling into a severe depression. This makes large banks too big to fail and constantly close to failing as the government bailout expectations make it yet more profitable for banks to maintain low buffers of shareholder equity. The free insurance also encourages excessive destabilizing balances of liquid credit in the economy and the hoarding of credit in general sustains bigger and bigger amounts of debt. As risk-free credit is wholly unproductive, the zero lower bound and the free deposit guarantee together mean that vast amounts of capital are practically on unemployment support. When the zero lower bound has been eliminated, a proper fee can be set on the deposit guarantee and by requiring banks to keep the risk premiums of their risk-bearing corporate bonds below this fee, we can make sure that deposits are never the cheapest source of finance for banks. This would make it profitable for banks to remain solvent and transparent without heavy regulation while allowing them to remain creative in their main line of business, managing risks. Currently, billions are wasted in the financial arms race between regulators and banks trying to meet the regulatory requirements and then circumvent them. Solvency, liquidity and balance sheets, as well as the deposit guarantee issue, are explained in more detail in another video and in the book Fixing the Root Bug.